Mina, konbanwa, Jesus Freaking Gamer here. Joshua chapter 2, we're going to talk about someone very, very popular. You might have heard of her if you've been in church circles for any amount of time. Her name is Rahab. Prostitute. Yeah, that didn't sound good at all. Anyway, most of y'all know the story. If you don't, read Joshua chapter 2. I'm going to give you a brief synopsis of what it says. I'm not going to read the whole chapter, otherwise I'd definitely go over my three to five minute guideline, which I usually don't break. Try not to do that today. In essence, Joshua sends two spies into the city of Jericho to spy it out, see, you know, basically what it's like. What, you know, what we're going to war, what are we dealing with? So could the Lord have just turned the city over to them? He could have. He didn't. He wanted them to fight. He wanted them to go at it. So he wanted them to exert their strength to do their best. And so, spies. Spy out the land. Two spies are sent in, have a needed prostitute named Rahab. Could something sketchy have gone on there? Bible does not say. We do not know. The only human nature, I would dare to say it's not completely and totally impossible. Although the law does specifically say prostitution is a bad thing. You don't go for that. So hopefully they obeyed the law of Moses. There wasn't anything funny going on between them and Rahab. But they did end up staying at her house. Kind of makes sense. You're a spy. You don't want to be found. You go to the more sleazy side of town, more the underbelly, where like the uh, the disgusting people and the less reputable people are. You don't want to be somewhere in plain sight if you're a spy. And Rahab tells them, "I will read this part." I didn't think I, did. I thought I knew where it was. Starting in verse nine, and said to the men, "I know that the Lord has given you the land." that the terror of you has fallen on us, and that all the inhabitants of the land are faint-hearted because of you. For we have heard how the Lord dried up the water of the Red Sea for you when you came out of Egypt, and what you did to the two kings of the Amorites who were on the other side of the Jordan, Sihon and Og, whom you utterly destroyed. And as soon as we heard these things, our hearts melted. Neither did there remain any more courage in anyone because of you. For the Lord your God, he is God in heaven above and on earth beneath. Now therefore I beg you, swear to me by the Lord, since I have shown you kindness, that you also will show kindness to my father's house and give me a true token. And spare my father, my mother, my brothers, my sisters, and all that they have, and deliver our lives from death. So, oh, there goes my bookmark. So they strike a deal with Rahab saying, yes, we will do this. Only, again, read the whole chapter, move everyone into your house, and hang the scarlet thread outside of your house that we climbed out of your house of to avoid the guards who are patrolling and looking for us. So you hang that thread down that we climbed out of, and you'll live. Read in succeeding chapters, she did just that. And this prostitute... This prostitute, you flip over to the New Testament, Matthew chapter 1, verse 5. Salmon begot Boaz by Rahab. I can't definitively prove that. Yes, these two Rahabs were one and the same person. It's incredibly and extremely likely that they are. So, yeah, the Messiah of the world, the Savior of the world, prostitutes in that lineage. Don't ever think that God can't use you. Don't ever think that. doesn't matter where you are or what you've been. She was a prostitute. She realized that the Lord was God of heaven and earth. She sided with the Israelites, God's chosen people. She said, I'm going to put in my lot with you. Yours is the right God. This is where I'm going to go. And again, by the law of Moses, very doubtful that she was a prostitute anymore after that. In fact, if she's in the lineage of Jesus, very, very likely that she got married to a Jewish man. Don't ever count yourself out or sell yourself short, no matter what mistakes you've done, no matter what you think you are, how you identify yourself. God can forgive you. God can restore you. God can use you because he loves you. Just acknowledge him as the God of heaven and earth. Put in, cast in your lot, so to speak, with him. That's what counts. Love you guys very much. God bless.